Hello YouTube, aren't you lucky? I'm giving you something hot off the press. My press. This is um, what I'm writing for my talk on um, surviving the 21st century. I'm doing it in Banbury. I may also do some impromptu ones here and there. Maybe just in the park. <clears throat> Obviously when I do it in front of people, um, they'll be able to ask questions which you can't do. <clears throat> so I'll try and sort of ask what I think would be the obvious points at questions. Um, the talk's going to be two hours long with questions, um, although I'm not going to make a video that long. I um, instinctively decided to split it into... 12 chapters, which I see now get <laughs> longer and longer. The first one is Love is the Answer. Good night. Second chapter, Miracle of Existence. Third chapter, Open Mindness. Fourth chapter, Truth. Fifth chapter, the sixth sense. Sixth chapter, the horrible truth. Seventh chapter, good, the test. Eighth, nature provides. Ninth chapter, coincidences. Tenth chapter, the next step. Eleventh chapter, the backside and twelfth chapter twenty forty seven <clears throat> Love is the answer. Good night. <laughs> I shouldn't have told you all the chapters. But it is, that is the answer in its simplistic form and um Depends what you mean by love, of course, because it might not mean sex or lust. There's also love of your family and the love of life. Just try now, send love to those you love most. Send them some love. Kind of here, you know. Feel it, feel the love for them and send it to them. Send love to those you might consider enemies. Because love is the answer. And if you just do it, then you'll know why. Love of existence. And it's always now can't get away from it. You're always in now. You're not in tomorrow. You're not in yesterday. It's now. So, feel now. And that will raise your frequencies, make you happier. And then you can send that happiness to others. <clears throat> Practice filling yourself with love and think positive or don't even think, just feel. It's often the words in our heads that confuse things. If you just feel, it'd be better. And yeah, practice it, do it. You know, these things, the more you practice them, the better they get. <clears throat> okay, chapter two. Miracle of existence. What do we know? You were born and the world was a magical place. Then you got told things by parents, teachers, friends, entertainers, government and more. And you formed beliefs. Beliefs that form your decision making and ultimately your path in life. 
Whatever has happened was meant to be. Good times pass just as bad times do. And the meaning of life is surely to be as happy or as euphoric as possible, whatever comes our way on the path through this life. So, basically I'm trying to get people to get their state of mind raised above all the crap that goes on, on all the thoughts in your head. Is this guy talking bullshit? Above all that, what do you really know? For absolutely sure because if anyone's told you something that isn't knowing <coughs> as I'm talking I may trigger thoughts and then those thoughts may make a conclusion in your mind and we're going to talk about beliefs a bit more okay so you know think about what you actually really know Chapter 3. Hear what I say with an open mind, as I'll be saying some things that might seem very far-fetched for some of you. But once you start to consider these views of our reality, you'll come to know it's true. Just like seeds, even in fertile ground, beliefs take time to grow and in time become like strong trees. With strong beliefs, decisions become easy, so it's important that what you believe is also right. If you have wishy-washy beliefs, then every time it comes to make a decision, you'll be all wishy-washy. Now, that's not necessarily worse than someone who has strong beliefs, because they're strong, they might strongly believe something that's totally wrong, based on what they've read in a book or what they've been told or what they've seen on TV but if you make strong beliefs on what you know to be true what you hand on heart know in your mind to be absolutely 100% then those beliefs will be right Chapter 4. Absolute Truth. Beliefs. True Reference Points. <clears throat> Chapter 4. Truth. Knowing. Oh, I have said about this. <laughs> Sorry. The only things you know for sure are what you experience first hand and they might not always make sense. This will often be because we have a warped belief that conflicts with what we're experiencing. A good example is when we are scared of doing something for the first time, but then find the actual, then find we actually enjoy the experience. This then is an enlightening and enjoyable, but it could be the other way round, which would still be enlightening, but would be frightening. It's mixed up. <laughs> First hand experiences can go further than just our five senses, though. Dreams, visions, instincts, often unclear, but just as real. I don't know if I wanted to add anything about beliefs, because I did write some stuff. Sorry. Well, I'll just say this, for example, I know from first-hand experience that an instinct comes in a flash and is immediate. I know from first-hand experience that it can contain a plethora of information. I know from first-hand experiences that truth can be obtained by asking questions and receiving information immediately. There I had enough true reference points to conclude the belief that within our minds lies access to all knowing, call it subconscious. 
So that's obviously a personal belief for me. You know, you have to get there on your own with your own experiences. I know from first-hand experiences, experience that when I am in a dream, I am in a different world, dimension. I know from first-hand experience that I have woken up in a dream into still another dream, multi-dimension. I know that I have been transported into another being and that I had no control over it. I know our minds never stop throughout the whole night. Whether we are awake or dreaming, we are not in full control of what happens to us. All we can do is react. I have seen karma in action hundreds of times, usually when it's occurred within seconds and minutes, but sometimes it's longer. Karma, I believe, upon my reference points that fit with other reference points, is unescapable, if not in this life, then in the next. We all have beliefs, whether we like it or not. If we don't base those beliefs on factual reference points that we ourselves have concluded based on our own findings, then we base them on the scattered and selected facts from sources we trust. That is, for the majority, the media. If you can't explain from your own experiences why you believe something, then you are at risk of being manipulated. Points of fact, like make a belief. Join other points of fact, links the beliefs. Here's one that misses. A shared point of fact reinforces other beliefs. When your different belief systems don't link up, it means one or both are wrong and leads to confusion. You adapt one belief, and when it links in with another, you form a conclusion which affects your perception on life. This will in turn affect how you understand all that happens in life. This is very powerful. Every day new information is fed to you. Some is your own first-hand experiences, some are other people's experiences told to you, and some are possibly fictitious events broadcasted by the media. Every thought you have is part of a decision-making process. When you believe you have the answers, and you act on them. You view the results to confirm your beliefs. All these beliefs are constantly popping into your head when relevant. If you wish to attain enlightenment, so you can act in situations in a way that is best for all, then it is imperative that you only consider, you only consider what you know to be true. What if you have no points of reference that you know to be true? In any given situation, a reaction from yourself requires a decision to be made. If you have no points of reference on what to base a decision, you will have no choice but to act instinctively. Now you have a point of reference in which to base decisions on. You've also begun to learn to use your instincts. Right. Number five, the sixth sense. To further your knowledge of true facts, to support or modify your beliefs, the sixth sense holds the keys. First step is to tune in to your instincts. You'll learn that there is no delay in instinctive thinking. Taking and trusting it in your immediate insight takes courage. We are prone to discarding it exactly because it is so quick. And I say insight, not thought, because it's more like a flash of a vision with a wealth of information. But we usually only get a fragment of it due to the toxins present all around us in this day and age and our busy lives. So what I'm saying there is... <clears throat> The sixth sense, obviously it's kind of 
in the mind because there's a picture it's foggy but it's completely 3D you know don't think it's a flat picture though I often kind of do I just got one sort of a you know but it's cloudy it's you know if you wanted to get it clearer you've got to meditate and and, and make sure you've consumed no fluoride, um, especially not the toxic fluoride, um, other chemicals, even just food, you know, probably after eating or having coffee, you're not going to be, you're not going to be sharp to it. Do some fasting. Come on. I've been up all night, I haven't been asleep. <laughs> it's uh, quarter to twelve now, nearly midday, and I wrote this this morning. The instinct is in its full form. The instinct in its full form is really the access we all have to the all-knowing, everything that's ever been, and every possible future outcome. It can't be turned off. Every time your mind asks a question, it answers you. It's just a matter of whether you can hear it or not. Antenna. Chapter 6. The Horrible Truth. You YouTubers will be well familiar with this stuff. We have been suppressed by more advanced beings for several thousand years. And yes, the suppression continues worse than ever, and they plan to wipe out the vast majority of us. This plan is now well underway, and a huge calamity could be just round the corner, but equally, so could a great deliverance. They want us to remain deceived, too busy to think about it, and in fear of the world around us. Their fear is that we will wake up to the truth and stop playing their game. It's true that it's been humans hurting other humans, but I remain convinced that people are inherently good, they fall into wickedness, ultimately by the deceivers. About 6,000 years ago, we started to grow crops and live in cities with levels of hierarchy. Why? Something must have happened to cause this change. It also started in just one place, Mesopotamia. We had been doing just fine hunting and gathering, fit and healthy, and with keen and creative minds. We know from ancient monuments, tablets, cave drawings, and writings throughout history of wonders that all point to extraterrestrial visitations and interference. Evidence, although not conclusive, indicates that these visitations include massive disruption to the planet and are cyclical. If you wonder why the whole world, nearly, is run in the same way and why everyone just seems to accept it, know that it is by design and by beings cleverer than your average professor. On the bright side, we are waking up, and we are many, and universal, unescapable karma is on our side. So there may be quite a few questions from people on that one, but I think YouTubers, I think you know. <coughs> what I'm on about. Chapter 7. Good. The test. If you like feeling good, then why shouldn't that be your greatest ambition? Jesus said, love your neighbour and love your enemy. He said, if struck, turn the other cheek. He wasn't saying this... <coughs> he wasn't saying this that we should be subordinate, but for our own well-being. 
If you actually try loving your enemy, you will be comforted for sure. And then you'll feel so much better for it. It's weird, but true. To receive good fortune in life is often a short-lived blessing which leads to a curse. But good experiences last forever. Meditation is a good tool to turn things to a positive when times are hard. Take some deep breaths. Close your eyes. And literally see the light. Now when you close your eyes you're going to have some remnants of light that was in the room. And it starts to sort of mingle up. But quite often there's a central point of light that you can focus on. And as you meditate it increases in size, becomes bigger. And when I do that meditation, I often get a feeling here on the bridge of my nose that if I move up, more things start happening in my mind and more colours. And if it moves down, it tends to sort of fade away, but still nice. And then, if you can't get a single source of light, Sometimes faces appear and what I've just recently been doing is only look at the faces that are made of light. Not the ones made out of shadows. And just concentrate on the emissions of light if you like. Just those little bits of light wherever they come from. I've yet to get like a, a whole white room feeling in and around me, but I've kind of got the idea for it. And also it's never the same twice. It's amazing. It's it's amazing. Try to feel more than think. Believe there is a seemingly unending possibilities once you relax. Words of mine could not do justice. Just wait and see. Point in this chapter is good is the only way. Evil doings is a trick. It's a trap. It leads no it leads nowhere. Chapter 8. Nature Provides Once you set your heart and mind towards all that is good and true, you will receive all you need to survive and thrive. Much of this will be by way of wisdom, and with this wisdom you'll receive sustenance. Sound strange? I was amazed and filled with joy when I realised that some of the most beneficial herbs grow wild in our gardens and fields. Dandelion, good for the kidneys, a diuretic that doesn't deplete the body of vitamins and minerals, also good for the joints and other organs. Milk thistle, seeds in particular, protects the liver and helps it regenerate. The liver is just like massive effects on our health with your liver. Red clover, an excellent blood purifier, and there are many more. Nature provides, but it was not, it was always there before. I just didn't know it, I didn't have the wisdom, I didn't have the knowledge. And sometimes these things just come to you in a flash of inspiration. You know, you might be reading something else or watching something else, possibly, but they can still come. And, um, oh yeah, I'm not finished yet. Be natural, only consume natural, let nature take its course. So, this is what I've experimented with basically. This is why I 
mainly why I got long beard and hair and everything. Um, because I just want to experiment with nature, and I've been drinking rainwater for I think it's two years. Um, bath in in rainwater. I have to add some hot water, but I don't use um, deodorant or anything. I, got some natural soaps that I use, I don't put a toothbrush in my mouth, I use licorice sticks and nibble on these and brush my teeth with it. I, um, I've i been walking around barefoot and that's cool, I find it really invigorating. They're a bit sore at the moment, I'm pondering whether to walk to Cropperty. Yeah, I think I might, barefoot. <clears throat> Got to walk back. It's quite a long walk, but yeah, it'd be all right. So you know, and this is the trust as well. You know, to go and eat a dandelion leaf from my garden. At least it's my garden. I know what's been on there. I haven't put any chemicals on there. <laughs> you know, doing that for the first time took a bit guts, but um, you get these signs. You have to trust in them. And the more you do, the more you rely on them, and, and the more they come true. And you just got to remember to be thankful and give thanks and praises. Chapter 9. Coincidences. We are all connected and ultimately we are all one. Whatever has happened was meant to be, and so it is when we cross paths with others. Again, instinct kicks in every time we come into contact with another. These experiences are often stronger and break through the barriers of modern life. Think about how you formed friendships as a young child and the adventures that unfolded. Those are moments that will be stored forever. And so too will experiences you have with people throughout your whole life. Always when there's good intention. And it's no coincidence that we are here in 2014, which is a very special time. Billions of years ago, there was basic life forms on this planet that couldn't see, hear, smell, think or much at all. About 200 million years ago, something major happened to the Earth, and it kicked off a surge of life on the planet, and seeing, hearing, smelling, and thinking was all around. Survival of the fittest has been the driving force of evolution. 6,000 years ago, we had a species that was capable of many things, including trade, craftsmanship, was self-sufficient, living in loving tribes, and in harmony with nature. I mean, the humans of that time, those hunter-gatherers, <clears throat> you know, they were pretty clued up, definitely. You know, they had all they needed. They didn't want for anything. So what was the problem? They wouldn't have changed unless something happened. Since then, it seems it was necessary to take two steps back before going forward more. But here we are on the verge of the cosmos becoming conscious. I don't doubt it's happened all over the galaxy and the universe many times, but for Earth it is a major landmark. The very stardust that has evolved to such a form that it can understand what it is and gain access to the unlimited abilities of the eternal soul. It's no small feat. Did you get that? I'm going to read it again slower. The very stardust has evolved to such a form that it can understand what it is 
and gain access to the unlimited abilities of the eternal soul. No small feat. I mean, you won't get the unlimited abilities of the eternal soul like that straight away. It's gradual. Chapter 10. The next step. Because of some seemingly dark evil plan, our world seems to be in a hostage situation with more than 20,000 nuclear bombs pointed at various points of the planet. And the uninevitable outcome if they get launched. And while we have this threat, we are forced to witness and partake in the raping of this our planet Earth. The problem isn't the number of people living it's the number of people going along with what is dictated to us from the organisations put in place long ago to control us. But very soon, the number of people waking up will multiply exponentially and the system that is hanging by a thread will come crashing down. Many people have been tricked by the deceivers and have been essential for keeping the system going. The deceivers are no longer have much need for us humans, not as many anyway. The true technology level is 10 or 20 years beyond what is in the public domain and it seems this technology requirement was their main reason for allowing humans to go along for the ride. This was actually something I was just kind of put in together as I kind of wrote it. Well, not really, but... You know, it does seem like they had a, a desire to progress technology faster than what would have been kind of natural. Um... Probably as they were sort of gaining strength, they were able to influence more and more. But it does seem like they were under some sort of time constraint, that they were aware that they needed to move things on. There is enough supportive evidence to surmise that a destructive cyclical solar system level event is about to take place, and the deceivers knew it would come since 1983 they knew pretty much when. So, the, the signs that they would have known it was coming would have been the weakening magnetic field of the Earth over the last 100, 200 years. And in 1983 is when Planet X was basically seen by an infrared telescope and since then it's been hushed up astronomers have died and they die in pairs and um, they've been able to to keep it from us pretty much with humans mostly living in highly populated cities many on the coast with a system as fragile as it is we are in peril I believe the mass awakening will happen just before the catastrophic event and then there'll be the panic, confusion and perhaps chaos to contend with. Eleven. The backside. Life is no joke. Whereas the deceivers have their plan, so is there a greater plan. Universal karma isn't always instant, and it takes faith to believe that eventually karma will be dealt. It is the deceivers and those who repeatedly turn away from the good path who await an unpleasant reward. The bad intentions are burned up, but the good intentions live forever. It's not too late, and even one good intention would save you. I'm talking about your soul, 
that lives from one life to the next, reaping the rewards of the previous existences. Those who survive, whether a blessing or a curse, I'm talking about the ca catastrophe, <laughs> the backside, on the backside, those who survive, whether a blessing or a curse, need to form communities of mixed ages and sex. In the past, communities of around 150 people have been the ideal size. A community of over 200 may well naturally divide, where a community of less than 100 might not be strong enough and people would eventually leave to join stronger ones. The fertility of the surrounding land will determine the land area needed to be self-sufficient. Communities may at times need to control birth if there is no room to spread. Hierarchy should be as age, oldest first. It's the only fair way. All the teachings of wisdom known should be taught the children, and the young adults should be given rights to roam for as long as they deem fit, but with the intention to come back and share and then contribute to that community. Why wouldn't anyone want to return to the community where those who you love the most are and know you the best? Of course, community switching would happen, otherwise we'd get into problems, but leave to the natural order and faith in the Creator. <clears throat> Surviving 21st century, last chapter 12, 2047. Nostradamus marks 2047 as the year when humanity is well re-established and when we discover space travel. This is something that stuck in my head for many years and it's the only thing which makes sense of the most powerful vision I've ever had in my life. It was just a thing happening with shapes and an acceleration and a sort of ultimate reaction. I linked it with instantaneous space travel because that is what I had been thinking about for many months, years. I like to think that the universe was designed so that any species that achieves interstellar travel must first evolve into a peaceful, loving society that wouldn't go off warring and raping planets. How then can I believe there is extraterrestrial evil present on Earth? Well, it seems that it may have been just a few rogue elements left behind from the last visit. And there are many mentions in the Bible which support this theory. Warring in heaven, Michael Archangel defeats bad guy, bad guy is cast to Earth and is trapped here until heaven, brackets, a solar system with a red dwarf star shrouded in a cloud of dust with five or so planets orbiting, close brackets, returns once more. Hence the hostage situation. So if you have the patience, the will and the faith to go through this unique time, then I salute to you. Ah! And wish you good luck. As I... It's Saturday, I'm not answering the phone. Let me rush my talk. <laughs> so near the end. Shabbat. So if you have the patience, the will and the faith to go through this unique time, then I salute you, whether that's the right thing to do, and wish you good luck as I too will endeavour the journey and sincerely look forward to the end of the deceit and the beginning of something very special indeed. Thank you, YouTube. Goodbye.